is a traditional time for family reunions, but one that took place in the Virginia countryside is a little different than most. The participants aren't related by blood, but they do share a common bond. All are descendants of the African diaspora in its many forms and are all making a living in the food industry. They came together to share their finest dishes, their common struggles, and ways to help each other survive and thrive. Last weekend, a communion of kinship. These foodies from across the globe aren't connected by blood, but by culture and a love of authentic international cuisine. When Jesus it's all the brainchild of Chef Kwame Onwachi. This is all about celebrating black and brown contributions to the food industry. This family reunion, inspired by his own Afro-Caribbean heritage, is a food and wine experience amplifying voices often muted in the culinary world. I wanted to highlight all black cuisine, you know, all food that stems from the diaspora. And you see there's chefs from Nigeria here, there's chefs from Trinidad and Tobago, there's chefs from Jamaica, there's chefs from Atlanta, from North Carolina. So it shows how diverse we are as a people. Onwachi rose to fame on Top Chef. I haven't cooked with rock crab before, but it was fun. I really liked the dish. Thank you, Chef. Then opened his first restaurant in 2017, but it closed in less than three months. He was executive chef at the acclaimed DC restaurant Kith and Kin, for which he won a James Beard Award until he walked away. I left to own my own restaurant. That wasn't a failure to you? No, I don't think any, I, I think failures are subjective. You know, failures are something that, it's a sign by the person using that word. You know, coming from the South Bronx and being able to hone a restaurant is a success for so many people, and myself included. So before we taste the great food, let's talk about the history. For Jamaican-born chef Andre Foles, success is all about gaining more exposure for his country's cuisine. Guys like spicy? Your mission is to elevate Afro-Caribbean food, Jamaican food. Absolutely. Why do you think there aren't more fine dining establishments that showcase those, and African-American food for that matter? It's hard when you don't have that blueprint. And even with Mexican food, it took a while for Mexican food to get to where they are. They still have the best about being street and being elevated. So I think we're on the cusp of pushing that boundary when it comes to Afro-Caribbean food. So this, this is a three-day process for us. The key to that, Paul says, is explaining the origins of popular Jamaican staples like jerk, a spice blend and a style of cooking invented by escaped slaves known as maroons in the 18th century. Ready? In this demo, Foles shows us how they cooked meats in smokeless underground pits. They created jerk as a means to survive because if um, once they're in the hills and they catch those local games and they pick those spices to marinate their meats, if they cook that on an open fire, then that would give away their position. So they had to dig a pit, bury their meats, and then it smoked it, so it preserved it, and also secured their location. Why is it important people understand that history? It's very important because they will better understand where we're coming from and how deep these roots run for us. And that's why we're so passionate to share that. So once someone understands your history and can better connect to you, then they better appreciate your food. And you're gonna get some banana pudding? Are you pudding? gonna hold on to all that? Yes! Oh my goodness. BET co-founder Sheila Johnson is co-host as owner of Salamander Resorts. Yeah, you gotta see this pig. This is Rodney Scott over here. Welcoming some of her favorite chefs. Have you ever been to something like this before? I've never been to an event like this before, and it just feels good to be here. It feels like just what it's named, a family reunion. I'm seeing folks I hadn't seen in years, and here we are with food. For Johnson, one of a handful of African-American owners in hospitality, she sees in this space an opportunity. We're going to talk about the issues. We're going to talk about not getting financial support to keep our restaurants alive. We're going to talk about minority-owned businesses. How do we strengthen this network? And that's what this is all about. For Kwame Onwachi, this is only a beginning. How can something like this change the food industry in terms of diversity, inclusion, better understanding of all the cuisines of the world? I think an event like this will showcase so many different cultures, and it also shows that this food is wanted. People are willing to spend money on this food. So 
why not invest more into our businesses? Why not invest more into our people? There are so many different things that we bring to the table, which is the reason why we deserve a seat at the table, at every table. And if you're not gonna give us a seat at our table, then we're gonna build our own. <laughs> and that's what this family reunion is about. And this is not just one event <laughs> they're already planning next year's. It, it's really about networking. It's really about you know, making a space where they can say, okay, here I'm having a problem. These are the solutions we found. Let's help each other create more space in this brilliant, yeah. brilliant industry. I'm already getting hungry and we still have 70, <laughs> 70 minutes to go. Why didn't we get invited, Michelle? <laughs> next year, next year, next year we're coming. Hey, we'll bring the dish maybe. Maybe here, you never know. You never know. I'm not going to say. <laughs>